Hey everyone, um, I've been getting a lot of requests from you viewers about how to get into the business of becoming a network telecom technician. I've had a pretty successful career for over two decades and so I thought I'd go ahead and share um, the things I think that would help people interested in getting into this line of work. Now before we dive right in and talk about tools and techniques and you know courses to take, let's begin with personality traits because it's important to understand yourself and if this kind of a career is going to make sense for you. So let's begin. Obviously the first thing you're going to want to have is a technology aptitude. How do you feel about working on technology? Are you good with computers and parts and pieces and communication systems? Are you that person that your friends come to whenever they're having trouble with their electronics and need help? You need to enjoy working on these things in order for you to really be successful in the career long term. Also, What's your mindset? Are you logical? Are you methodical in the way you solve problems? Or do you just jump in and guess until you get lucky? Or do you always call somebody to help you solve your problems when it comes to electronics? The important part is to be logical and methodical in your mindset. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time and become very frustrated in this line of work. And then are you comfortable with change? Because technology is always going to be changing. And you're going to need to be comfortable with the idea that what you learn today may be obsolete five years from now. How do you feel about working alone? You know, there are a few network and tech telecom positions where you do get lucky and work in, you know, a network operations center or maybe some kind of a repair center. But most of the time, a successful technician is going to be sent out to location. Sometimes you'll be sent in pairs for larger installations, but a lot of times for most service calls, you're going to be sent by yourself and you need to be comfortable with that. You need to be able to solve your own problems. It's true that when you're new there will be a certain amount of needing to call your boss on occasion or your supervisor to get help with things but in the long run you're going to need to learn to solve problems on your own even when they're things that you haven't worked on before. And then you're going to have to have this perseverance that in spite of stress or discouragement or your own frustration you need to persevere through to the resolution. Um, there will be some occasions where something is just really giving you fits and you may have to you know, bring somebody in to help you or you may have to leave and come back the next day. But that's only going to be a one-off. 90% of the time, you're just going to have to keep fighting with something until you get it. And you will get it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it and you realize that you know, these things can be overcome. Lastly, under this category is taking responsibility for all the details. You're going to be there by yourself and while you're there the customer is going to point out something that came up as soon as you showed up. Now it may have nothing to do with what you're doing but the customer perceives that because you're there and you're working on the fax machine and that all of a sudden Susie in accounting's laptop doesn't connect to the wireless network anymore their customer thinks that's related. You need to at least address it. You can't say hey that's not my problem, it's not my department. You need to take responsibility for it. I'm not saying that it was your fault but you need to, to, need to address it. Customer interaction. So you can't get around the fact that you're going to have to be comfortable working with the customer. And the customer's probably going to follow you around some of the time. And, and it's unavoidable. So if you're somebody who's going to be not cool with trying to get your work done while somebody's watching, then you may have a problem. It's very common that when you show up to work on something for about the first 10 or 15 minutes, the customer usually want to follow you around and watch what you're doing. Um, and with that goes customer service skills. Here's the good news. If you've ever worked in retail or if you've worked in uh, like fast food or something, chances are you've already got customer service skills that are completely transferable into the world of becoming a network technician. It's really about being polite, maintaining your cool, not losing your temper, because customers are going to say mean things from time to time. Sometimes they mean it, sometimes they don't mean it. Sometimes customers think they know best. You go there to solve a problem and the customer is going to say, well, I'm pretty sure the problem is here. And you're going to say, okay, that, I get it, but let me check this first. And you're just going to have to be polite about it and accept that you're going to get some criticism and you, you can't lose your cool. The key to overcoming the previous two bulleted items, customer service skills and maintaining your temper, is articulation. The better you are at being able to explain yourself and convey to the customer that your sense of confidence or explain to the customer what's going on in a way that they can understand goes a long way to help making the customer feel more comfortable and thus gets them out of your hair. 
So if you're not someone who's very good with talking to people, especially people you don't know real well, this could be a challenge for you. On the other hand, if you're quick on your feet when it comes to using your mouth to explain things or to, as we say in the business, tap dance around topics, then that's going to help you a lot. Now, stress management is going to be key. I'm not going to lie to you. It is fun to do this job, but it does come with stress. You will be in situations where you're going to have to fix something when there's a lot of pressure. You may be working on a component that needs to be ready for 4 o'clock, and it's 345, and that component's not working yet, and you have no clue what the problem is. But you need to persevere. You need to maintain your cool, and you need to stay focused. You, know, you may have the customer coming in and saying, hey, my network's been down for half an hour. What are you doing about it? And you just have to be polite and say, yes, sir, I understand. I'm, I'm getting all the resources I can to get this problem solved. And you need to stay focused. If you lose your cool, if you begin to panic, you're going to want to retreat or you're just going to want to throw your hands up. That's not an option. The reason it's not an option is because if you get a reputation for doing that, then you're probably going to get a pink slip. You're not going to be useful to your employer or to your dispatcher if you're known for running away every time the heat gets too hot in the fire. Okay, the other one is your personal appearance. You need to look the part. You need to look like what you say you're there to do. So in this picture here in the slide, that's a picture of me. I'm standing in front of a couple of uh, Nortel uh, PBX cabinets. This was a typical outfit for me, blue jeans and um, a badge. And you know, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on that, but I will say that a badge can go a long way to instilling confidence when you show up on site. So, you know, wearing torn jeans with holes in them or, you know, wearing a concert t-shirt, that might be okay if you're there, say, maybe after hours to do a bunch of cable pulling. But it's not going to be cool when you're walking into a business office in the middle of business hours. All that's really going to do is just cause the customer to really question whether they should even let you in the front door in the first place. Moreover, because a lot of the locations you need to get into are going to be highly sensitive uh, locations like server rooms or telecom closets, you need to garner a sense of trust. You need to convey from the minute you walk through that door, hey, I'm a professional, I know what I'm doing, I look like what I say I am, a telecom or a network technician, and you can trust me and let me into these places. Also, aside from your appearance in terms of dress and haircut and hygiene, would also be just the way you carry yourself. How do you talk? What's your posture? How do you speak? What are your hand gestures like? Do you make eye contact? All these things are important because in order to get your job done, you need that rapport with the customer. You need that sense of trust. Um, your eagerness to learn. How do you feel about learning new things? You know, there's a certain amount of on-the-job training that goes with this business, but you're going to need to keep up with emerging technology. <clears throat> I'm not saying that every day after work you need to dive right into a bunch of technical journals and, you know, take classes all the time, but you do need to pay attention. You know, when you come across a new term you haven't heard before, you need to look it up. You know, I mean, we, we're, we're wonderfully blessed now with these smartphones that in the palm of our hand we have this access to information. So if you hear, for instance, the word, you know, DSCP tagging and you don't know what that is, look it up. You know, it won't take you but a second to find out. And then once you know that buzz term and you repeat it back to the customer or to the customer's IT people, it helps gain a lot of credibility. You need to take time to figure things out. Yeah, it's true. There is a certain amount of voodoo magic in this business where you can just simply reboot something and it gets fixed. But it's important to also take the time to understand why something got fixed so that when it happens again and the reboot doesn't solve the problem, you're better armed to deal with the problem in the future. Now, lastly is flexibility of schedule. So you may not want to hear this, but unfortunately there are no nine to five network technician jobs. You need to understand that because the nature of technology is highly unpredictable, it's very hard to put time limits around it. You know, sometimes people ask me when something's broken, they say, well, how long will this take to get fixed? Well, it might take 15 minutes or it might take two hours. It's very hard to quantify. Now, as I begin to hone in and, 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 and you know, zero in on the problem, I may be able to say, yeah, we know what the problem is. About another half hour, we'll have this done. But there's going to be a lot of times when you're going to have to work late or you're going to have service calls that go longer than they should have, and you're going to have to be comfortable with that because that's just the nature of the business. 
Part of this business also means that you're going to sometimes be stuck working on weekends and after hours. Now, that shouldn't be all the time, but you just need to be aware that the occupation does go with a certain amount of off-hour work. Why? Well, it's obvious, because a lot of times when big systems need to be taken down, the customer wants that stuff done outside of the normal working hours so that their employees don't get affected. And really, if you want to wrap up a lot of this, it's comfort with uncertainty, because that's just the nature of the business. You won't be able to go into every location knowing everything you need to know. You won't be able to walk into a site and say, I should only be here for an hour. You might, and that might be an intelligent guess, but sometimes you never know. What seems like should be a 15-minute service call can be the one that keeps you there all day. So you're just going to have to learn to be uncomfortable with uncertainty. And if that's going to be a real problem for you, then that's something to consider before you dive in to this field of business. Well, I hope that was enlightening to you. We're going to make a few more videos on this topic. The next one is going to be how to break into the business. So if you're not in the business already, but you want to get into the business, assuming that the videos that I just made, um, that you know those, those personality traits kind of line up with who you are, then we'll talk about real world ways that you can break into the business. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.